All right. Well, we are really excited to be here. It's been a crazy year and uh, we're really excited to be part of the SK Modern Wedding Summit. What do you guys call it? SK Modern? Did I forget Modern? Anyway, we're really excited to be here. Uh, thank you very much to Carly from Pretty in the Pines and uh, Crystal from Method Events for spearheading this and having us join. Uh, it's been really awesome to be able to capture everybody today and uh, see uh, what they had to say and some of their really helpful tips. So anyway, really, really excited. Uh, but before we go too far, uh, a little bit about us. Should we say something related to what we're doing, like what we do on the wedding day? Oh, how about our favorite part of the wedding day? That's a good one, right? Um, <laughs> uh, good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my name is Chris Rempel. I am a videographer. And on the wedding day, you'll see me either running a live stream or standing behind cameras filming. Um, and I'm capturing those special um, moments uh, in time. Uh, and my favorite one of my favorite parts of the wedding day is uh, that moment when the couple is coming up the aisle uh, just at the end of the ceremony and people are cheering around them and there's a lot of noise and celebration and, and their, their faces are, are just lit up and they're excited. And then there's usually a moment when they just look at each other and make just like a briefest of connections. It's a busy day, um, but there's like such a great feeling in that one moment when you are just filming or, or photographing them coming up the aisle there. It's like such a, such a cool moment to capture in time. So do you ever cry when you see that? No, I do sometimes. <laughs> this is about you. Anyway, I'm Melissa Weir. Um, I'm a photographer and editor with MJ and co. And my favorite part of the wedding day would be getting to whisk the couple away for sunset photos, but I'll get into that a little bit later. My name is Crystal Ramage, also Matt's better half. Much better. <laughs> the best. I am a photographer with MJ and Co. And I think my favorite part of the wedding day is uh, when the bride is getting ready with her girls and just capturing those little fleeting moments that just seem to go by so quick uh, so the bride can go back and look at those later. My name is Matt Ramage. I am the founder of MJ and Co. And uh, my favorite thing well i miss what i do i take pictures and help run video cameras and i love being on wedding days um so mostly photography started a long time ago and now we're here and it's it's great to be here um <laughs> i'm rambling all right uh favorite part of the wedding day candy bar donut bar and then but just a little bit more than those is the toasts when the especially if dads i don't know what it is about dads but when dads start gushing about their kids and how proud they are or how excited they are to invite the new, you know, son-in-law or daughter-in-law into the family. That is, that's my favorite part. And definitely, um, I'll be sitting there like wiping my tears away. So it's awesome. So today we're going to share 10 important things that shouldn't be an afterthought for your wedding. So we've seen all of these tips in the wild. Um, it's a super long title. I know it rolls off the tongue, but these are just tips we've seen and they are, we put them together from real experience and they're to help you get better photos and videos and just enjoy the day better. So you guys ready? Okay. So ready. We're going to do it. It's okay. Okay. Bouquets. They're just great accessories. They are a great representation of a bride's style. Florists uh, nowadays just have access to so many different flowers different colors of flowers, all the greenery that's out there. So just so many options to choose from. And the bride can just really personalize it to her style. And we've even seen um, brides that will have a picture of their loved one and they'll put it in a locket. They may attach it to the stem of the bouquet just to hold on as, you know, they're walking down the aisle, they catch a glimpse of that little photo in the locket or feel it and they just remember that person is there with them in spirit. And it also makes for great detail photographs, whether it's in the morning when they're getting ready, um, just putting it with their jewelry or their footwear, you get those really pretty detail shots. Um, even throughout the day when you're doing your formals, it really adds a lot of color and interest to the photos as well. And then um, one of the ones we would say is maybe most importantly is just it gives you something to do with your hands. Oftentimes, um, for the photos, we have those couples or 
bride or groom, they may feel just a little bit awkward, like what should I do with this hand? And so it can be a great tool, uh, accessory to use for that as well. Can you imagine if we didn't give you a mic for this? Like you wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so I have the mic. Prime Keep my example. hands busy. I'm a very like <laughs> hand person. This photo here, this one's one of my favorites I like to take when I'm on a uh, wedding day. I love, I love it when the groom holds it for his bride. Um, it's, it's just super romantic. She's helping or he's helping her walk, you know, and I don't know, his arms are on her. She's just all enthralled with him. And, uh, I, I probably do that one almost every time. And it just, it's not like I plan it. It's just like, it comes naturally. Like he's helping her like hold her dress or hold her flowers, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really cute on a, on a wedding day. All right. This one's mine. Greet and acknowledge every table. Um, when you have a large amount of guests at your wedding, you know, you got tons of people who've been like come from out of town or even across the country or across the world. It's really nice to be able to uh, get some face time with them. And, you know, a receiving line is fine, but you don't, it's very way more rushed because typically if you have a receiving line, you're, you're doing photos after that and you're doing, um, you know, let's say the family photos and then the couple's photos. There's a lot of like pressure or, you know, a lot of couples these days just skip it all together. Um, I would say more people don't do that than do do that. Um, so, so just visiting people at the wedding reception at the table, you know, between courses of your dinner or maybe between, um, you know, you've eaten first and then your, your, your guests are sitting there waiting. Uh, it's really awesome. It's super classy. One of the things about photos though, is you get, uh, a lot of great opportunities for candid photos. So bring a champagne glass with you or you know, a drink or something, and you can cheers your guests. And it's really fun. Your guests will remember it, and I think uh, it'll be more fun for you as well. Um, that's it. Let's move it on. So there's uh, a point in, in every wedding when you, or most weddings, I should say, I can't assume every wedding, but uh, where- Every wedding. <laughs> okay, we'd like it to be for every wedding where you have an opportunity to um, address all of your guests or the attendees. And whether that's a smaller group or like we're most used to having like a couple hundred people. Um, I know that the, the potential is there for you to to forget or to miss thanking somebody or saying something special about a particular person, but but don't let that um, squash your uh, preparation for giving a thoughtful toast. Um, and and the reason that you want to do that is is twofold. Like you do want to acknowledge the guests that are there, and you do want to acknowledge the people that have put work into your day. But you also, um, and this is coming from a videographer point or uh, perspective, uh, it, it gives some really, really great sound bites for the, uh, for the, for the keepsake films that we make. Um, and I think we might have an example of that, uh, but, um, I got one ready for you. Ready okay. Rock. Well, sure. Let's do it now. Yeah. Right now? Right sure. Now. Here we go. Sure. As any good father of the bride, it should end with wise words. And I have some for my new son-in-law and I am proud to say you are my son-in-law. It's only when you reach my age that you realize what it means to go home at night to a woman who gives you respect, tenderness, and affection. But what that really means is you've gone to the wrong house. <laughs> so. so you can have a little bit of fun uh, or you can be serious. It's, it's, it's really up to you. Uh, just just make sure that you put some thought into it don't don't leave it till the day or the night before you're gonna have too much on your mind and you're gonna have too much on your mind the day of and so if it helps you to write it out then just write it out nobody's gonna hate you for reading off a, a list of thank yous for the many many people that will likely be supporting you and helping you put this day together so yeah and to add to that wing in it just like even today it's like We've prepared quite a bit. It's still like kind of hard to do this. Like on your wedding day, there's a lot going on. Plus you probably got a few drinks in you. Winging it is like not a good idea. Plan it out, have even bullet points and uh, it helps. I'm gonna go into this next section. I'm gonna do this one. And this one we call it tip number four, make it personal. So the whole idea of this is like, you only have a few times during your wedding day that are like, you have the floor and the stage to talk. Um, 
And one is your vows and at your wedding ceremony, and one is the, the toasts that Chris was just talking about. And making them personal is, um, again, great for the video, um, but it's also like super sweet and romantic. And part of me just like, these always melt me. We're gonna show you a clip from a, a wedding that like when I watched the edit after we made it, I just like, I can't help but just like feel warm and fuzzy and, and like it makes me tear up. Um, so, and I remember it being really special for the couple. So this is from this, this video clips from a, a couple, Andy and Tegan, they got married this past summer and um, you know, they had custom vows or what do you call them? Not custom vows. Personalized. Personalized. And, uh, and actually at their ceremony, their officiant, a lot of people have done this in the past few years. Um, they get married like city hall, whatever. And so they're actually technically married already, but on their wedding day, they just have someone they love and in their family um, do the officiating. So it's they're you know, they're not actually signing the papers or anything, but that is, uh, that's what Andy and Tegan did. And yeah, it was super special. He was gushing about her. She was gushing about him. And uh, it was really, uh, really great. Um, plus independent research has shown that your chances of getting laid go up 10x when making a public declaration of your love. So here's a clip. I love how great of a mother you are. I love that you love my mom, even though you never met her. I love you, Tegan. You don't ever talk about being good and doing good things. You just do them. You don't let anger get the best of you, and you never speak ill of other people. You're just such a good man. So are you guys crying? I had, <laughs> no. a, wipe, I had a wipe a tear. I had a wipe a tear there. <laughs> so, sweet. so sweet. All right, let's move on. Well, it's his turn. Oh, it's my turn. So lighting. Lighting can completely transform a space, um, especially from a photographer's perspective. Um, the lighting can make all the difference. So I find as a photographer that the majority of the venues that we work in um, really aren't set up lighting wise. Uh, there's beautiful venues, but when it gets dark in the evening at reception time, they're just not well lit and that's not great for photos. So it is really good to think about that when, uh, when planning your wedding and yeah, what else? Well, yeah. And your DJ and wedding planner can help with this. Um, we've seen some like really shanty looking, you know, what's the <laughs> word, your town community center really transformed with drapery and lighting. And that's where your, you know, your DJ can bring like the disco ball, uh, and the laser lights and all that stuff. And then, Usually then if they're there, they can also add spotlights to the podium, which is really good. Um, and then your wedding planner can also provide uplighting, which really sets the mood. So, you know, you got a beautiful venue like the barn at Wind's Edge. You don't need a lot to go there. Maybe just some lighting on the podium and the head table. Uh, you go to the community center um, so you can hold 300 guests or something like that when that's available again. Um, that's where you, you need that help and some draping, some lighting, you know, talk to your wedding planner about this. Um, it, it makes all the difference. Um, this, the photo on this slide here, this was from Rathen and Geraldine's wedding. This is at the Ramey Modern. Um, the light in that shot, that's lights we've brought. So we do bring our own lighting to just make the, the photos and videos look, uh, pretty dynamic, but you can see they also had, um, you can't really see it in this exact shot, but they had the words love and like the lit up love letters behind them. And, uh, they had those, um, spark, I don't know what you even call those lights. What are those lights on that yeah, photo? String lights. <laughs> string lights. Yeah, yeah. So they brought that, and then uh, behind that was a view of the river. Um, so anyway, you know, work with the space and think about that. Um, I guess why we put this in here was we've seen weddings where we're, you know, the podium and the head table. You just can't see what's going on there. It's it's so dark and. Uh, just that, a, that doesn't translate over to video or photos very well. And especially if you want those like nice audio bits and you've got a video coming down the pipe, like from, from anybody, from whoever you hire. Yeah. Ask Hopefully your, us. Ask, but like, your, ask like, your photographer, videographer, like we do bring our own lighting, but it's like, it, even for people just to see it is, it is super nice to have yeah. some lighting that's, um, 
kind of highlighting what's going on. And, and it makes it less notable, noticeable too when people are at the back getting up, going to get a drink, getting, going to the washroom. Um, it just puts the focus on the front of the room. So I should add too that you can end up with some really beautiful like first dance shots if you've got some fun lighting, um, often provided by the DJ. But you can have some really romantic looking first dance shots in there as well. Signage. Just do it. Do signage. Um, we'll keep this one short and sweet. We're halfway done. Um, <laughs> so you get married on your friend's acreage outside of town and you say, OK, everybody, take a left at Martinsville or take a left at uh, wherever. Go three miles, turn right past the blue house with the Quonset and then into the field. Us city folk are intimidated by that kind of thing. So signage is a really important part, um, but it can also be fun and part of your decor. You know, it doesn't take a lot to make um, some simple stuff like that. So think of it as like, don't treat it like, an, you know, it's the day before your wedding. You're like, how are people going to know? Like a balloon on a stick with an arrow. You know, you want your name at least there. Um, <laughs> I've seen, you know, K and K wedding or something like that. That's probably not even too bad. I might just put the names on. Um, and then when it comes to your reception, and and your ceremony space it's great to have signage too like let's say you're in a hotel even hotels can hold multiple weddings in a night and uh or a day and you know they have their little si digital signage with you know whose parties where and it's like you know to have your own signage just looks better like right outside the doors um you can talk to Mashid from paper ocelot she does really great work um or your wedding planner can help you with that too um, but yeah, don't, don't forget to do it. Um, what else have we got, uh, got here? That might be it. You guys have anything to add? There? Well, if you want to go a step further than that, uh, at all of the, the venues that you have, especially if they're outdoors, um, if you're hosting an event of any kind, just like at your parents' farm or maybe your acreage or something, nobody's going to know where you should and shouldn't park. Like you might think yeah. that it would be obvious, or but I've been on, yeah, and, and it, this isn't a slam, but I've been to many acreages or farms where it's just like, there's gravel, but I don't know, like I haven't been there before, so I don't know that you can't park between this shed and the, and the fence. It might seem like a safe space, but you come back out and there's three trucks in your way and you can't possibly get out. Chris, Chris is like, fe like fears this. <laughs> Uh, being being, being in stuck parking. somewhere when it's time Sign to go. Signage is my love language. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is another um, important one. So your wedding day has a lot of things you're doing. Um, I want you to kind of just imagine you're getting ready and we're, you know, your photographer and videographer show up. You spent the morning with your friends getting ready. It's a great time. Now, if you just switched one thing and that's you're doing too many of the things you're get you're the one getting table covers on chairs or you're the one picking up flowers or stuff like that um or even just answering the phone when people are doing your errands for you um it just takes away from it um you know we want brides to be relaxed and having fun and grooms too um just with their friends and so you know delegating is really important delegate it to people you can trust um well, maybe Melissa wants to share about that one. Yeah, I would say um, delegate to the people that you know can handle the task. Um, it's not always necessary. Like if you're not hiring a wedding planner, uh, then delegate to people that you know will take care of it for you. Like I think it's a common misconception that you need to kind of throw all your big tasks on your maid of honor and maybe your maid of honor is your best friend or your sister but maybe she just or can't. younger sister she's 17 years old yeah no maybe idea. she can't take on all of those tasks so maybe she doesn't just delegate even have id them. to buy the booze yeah. <laughs> delegate to the right people that you know can take care of it for you and and then that's also the best way to have people involved in your wedding where you want them involved mm -hmm. because like you were saying with andy and tegan they could have somebody involved that was like a great public speaker to do their um officiating and stuff like that and so it, it like it frees up the people that are like front and center or should be front and center for the day and and allows other people to also be involved so it's like a it's a win-win if you're looking for people to be involved in your wedding and you don't want to turn anybody down yeah and, and one of the weddings we did this past fall the couple had um i think six bridesmaids carly was there from Pretty in the Pines and we were filming it and there was this moment where the bride walks down the stairs and 
all of her bridesmaids and her dad's there and her mom's there. And they're all there ready to see her get her dress on for the first time. And I'm like, that's special. And that's a moment you need everybody there for. So ask for help. Don't do it yourself. We want photos where you're having fun and we want your VIPs there. Okay, my favorite part. So sunset photos. I recommend this to everyone whose wedding I shoot. This is my favorite part of the day, like I said. Um, it's just a time when I will whisk away the bride and groom after dinner, depending on the schedule for the day, it could be after the first dance, but it's within that hour or so before sunset. And uh, I find that you get the best, most relaxed shots of the day. Um, the couple has a chance to just have a really quiet little moment together. I just tell them to forget that I'm there and they can just focus on each other. And yeah, I find that I get the prettiest photos of the day, not only lighting, but just a relaxed couple that's now the stress of the day is over and they can just sigh a relief and give a little love to their partner before heading back to the party. What kind of love? What kind of photos are these? Kissing love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want you to close your eyes. Everybody can close their eyes. Imagine it's a beautiful wedding day. You have this beautiful outdoor ceremony. Um, the sun's shining, the sky's blue. Your officiant said the cheesy line about the rings being a circle and it's eternity and how that makes you know, them so special. And all of a sudden, your great aunt Karen from Calgary pops up in the middle of the aisle with her iPad Pro, 39.9 inches. She's got the folding case, so it drops down. Uh, and now you're looking at 26 vertical inches taking up space. And uh, uh, just as you're about to kiss, you know, you don't want that. You don't want that. You, you want eclipsing your... the, the entire view of the oh, camera. Yeah, from blocking the sun them. pretty much with your iPad. Yeah. <laughs> this, I mean, I joke about this, um, but this has happened at, like many times with the iPad. So stop getting your, your grandparents' iPads for Christmas as their only camera. No, I'm kidding. But what I, what, and like, and there's another thing to this. Like, this isn't 1995. Like, um, photos during the ceremony don't wreck your photos. Like, we take a bajillion photos. And the odds of a flash affecting my photo, I mean, most cameras don't even use flash anymore. But what it is, is we don't want, like, a special moment where, you know, you're walking... Uh, you know, let's say I got, we got some photos here. Even this, this wedding here is actually a good example. This, this photo here is Frankie and Gloria. She's walking down the aisle. He's like losing his, you know, you know what? And, uh, tears. yeah, he's losing his tears. And you know, the worst thing would be like, you know, the mom or the dad just, they're filming it and they want to remember it too, which I don't blame them for, but they're just looking down through their bifocals, chins tucked, and all the photos of them, the whole wedding ceremony of them recording. I mean, you can picture it, right? right? Not flattering. Yeah, it's not great. So that's that's like our thing about unplugged ceremonies. They are good. And they're, they're you know, when you're going to have that emotional moment, we're like glued onto the people we know are your VIPs. Because like when you cry, they cry. And when they cry, you cry. So we're watching all those things. And you don't want to be looking over. We don't want to be looking over at them. And then they got their phone. They got their phone down here. And uh and you know we missed that so i'm going to show you these photos this one's frank and gloria's ceremony uh this photograph is uh as she's walking down the aisle and right after we get a shot of his mom and that's the groom's mom just staring at him like just beaming she's just present with him she's there uh and it's really special so that's that's our advice for the the unplugged so yeah it doesn't wreck it but it does it is nice when we just can People can be there, watch it. You know, make sure you just send the link of the photos. Grandparents do want the photos, so send them the link, you know, or take a photo with them after the ceremony or something like that. Make a photo book, I don't know. Um, but yeah, for the ceremony, we definitely think the unplugged um, just makes it more magical. All right, you do you. So what we mean by this one is just make your wedding your own. Um, you and your fiance are going to have values that kind of, you know what you want in your wedding day, what would make it special. So just make it, make it your own. Uh, Pinterest, seeing inspiration from maybe other friends who just got married, other photographers' pages. You're going to get some really good inspiration from that. Um, but just make sure that you always come back to making it your own. Pinterest can be a deep, deep dark rabbit hole, can almost get into a bit of a trap. 
Um, so just Th make that sure. has literally been a theme from the other yeah. sessions today. Okay. Is like Pinterest has great ideas. It does, but you but need to be careful. You might go crazy or broke trying yeah. to attain them. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. So just make it special. Make it your own. Um, just because your friend did something, don't feel the pressure to do it that way. And there's um, always that one bridesmaid. Yeah. There's always that They got that married one. six months yeah. before you, and they're like, every idea is like, well, we did it this way. It worked really well. Yeah. And they mean good. They but do. it's still they're they're them and they should do them you should do you yeah totally um i'm gonna touch on covid for a little bit we're almost done here covid was like this whole pandemic's been really interesting we've we actually photographed almost i think there's only four weddings we didn't shoot this past year so most of the weddings that booked us went ahead went ahead with it and uh just did it like an alternate version of their day and when we asked them like if they felt like it was a compromise they were all happy they did it anyways so that's one thing i thought was really interesting and the other thing was like they, they did miss out maybe on the big party but they did get it they, they got something more in other ways so they got to be more intimate with their wedding party and their family and there was a definite theme to it and um none of them f like i got the vibe that none of them felt like they compromised like they still got a beautiful day that was that was really special so i think that is going to still inspire inspire future people getting married like in the next years even after this is all done to maybe have that smaller wedding uh you know the food at these 30 person weddings was like, was like every time it was better definitely <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think it's just easier to cook for 30 people yeah. than 200 right yeah i think that having a smaller wedding gives you kind of a more budget opportunity so if you're rather than spending on you know, two to 300 guests, then you have a little more budget room for more high quality things like food, like a great wedding planner, um, or like a great photo video team where, I mean, an example would be, um, we had Jesse and Jenna last year, uh, or just this summer, I should say, they had a smaller ceremony. They ended up opting for the video option, which they wouldn't have done before because they were able to avoid it. And now they've got this special keepsake video. And they, they left us a raving review. Insert here. <laughs> we should motion track it here. <laughs> Just kidding. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's, here's a, just a quick photo. This is Tegan. They had a food truck. Was it Rebel Melt? Yeah. Uh, yes. So they, they had a permit for a park and uh, got from the city. And they had a food truck. They had some drinks and a super casual day. And it was... Um, very unique and very really special fun. and yeah. you know they had the wedding they were going to do the reception later on another date not going to do that anymore all these people that were going to do the secondary reception later all of them with us have already canceled it because they had the wedding they wanted so anyway that was really cool okay this is the ending so uh, i just want to thank everybody so much for being part of today and joining us uh, if you found this helpful you can find more tips like this and conversations like this by subscribing to our podcast you can find it online. It's called the Sask Wedding Podcast. Uh, it's available wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, and uh, definitely come by our booth. We're wanting to chat with you today too. So yeah. Yeah. Well, and the reason that we're doing this, any of this is because we love weddings and like we love helping people remember weddings. And so it's, um, it's a, like a treat, honestly, to be able to come along and share in, in that day with a couple and help and, and then to deliver them something afterwards that we know that they will be able to continue to look back on and remember like that's that's the point of why we do what we do absolutely uh and we'd love to connect with you so if you'd like to see what it's like to work with us and our team um you can book a free discovery call on our website mm -hmm. so look us up on facebook and instagram at mjn.co to see what we've been up to and some of our latest work lots of fun stories uh, and shenanigans so anyway. lots of shenanigans <laughs> mostly shenanigans mostly. let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much for for uh joining us today for the sk modern wedding summit we'll chat soon